Welcome to another video. Let's find the surface area of revolution of the function x squared over 4 minus natural log of x over 2. I have observed that this topic is not popular with students. They don't usually talk about it. They don't want to do it because of the confusion that you get when you look at all the different formulas that are available to you when you're solving this. Sometimes you say use y, sometimes use f of x, sometimes use y prime, sometimes use dy dx, sometimes use x. Oh, don't put y squared, put just x, put just y. Now, all that confusion, I think it is in trying to be overly precise. And then people get confused. This is the explanation. You have a function. It is described in terms of f of x. So just stick to f of x in everything you do. The only time you need to make a decision is in deciding what your radius is going to be. And that's it. And your radius depends on in what direction the function is rotated. The problem we have here says we are rotating about the y-axis. So the y-axis is vertical and you're running round circles horizontally. The horizontal line is the x-axis, therefore your x must be the radius. Let's have a sketch of it. So you have something like this. And then you have this graph in particular, if you graph it, it looks like this. And we're starting from 1 and we're stopping at 2. So let's say this is 1 and this is 2. So it is this portion that we're interested in. So I'm going to get rid of this and I'm going to get rid of this part too. So the part we're interested in is just this part that goes, gets rotated this way. So what we, have, we just have a solid ball like that, rotated like that. So the part we're trying to get is just this part, the surface. Now the radius of this ball, you can measure it starting from here all the way here. And you can see that the radius has to be in terms of x. That's the only thing. So when you write your formula, this is our formula. We say that the surface area is always equal to 2 pi times the integral from a to b of the radius multiplied by ds. What's my radius now? It's x because I rotated about the y-axis, so this has got to be my radius. It has to be in terms of x. That's how I measure the radius, not vertically. Now, if I rotate it this way, that will be another question, another case, which in another video, I'm going to show the other options. But right now, we're making x our radius. And what is the s? So this can be written more precisely as 2 pi. In this case, it's going to be the integral from 1 to 2 of our radius is just going to be x. You don't need to do anything. And ds is going to be the square root of 1 plus the derivative, which is f prime of x squared. It's going to be dx because this is written in terms of x. That's it. This is all you need to know how to write. Let's get into the video. So because the rotation is about the y-axis, the radius has to be in terms of x. So we just need to write the formula and put all the correct things where they're supposed to be. So remember, we say that the surface area is given by 2 pi times the integral from the beginning point, which is 1 to 2 of, we have x. So the radius has to be x. That's the hard part. And you have the square root of 1 plus, this is the function. So the derivative will be f prime of x squared dx. It's going to be dx because um, the function is given in terms of x. If it was given in terms of y, then our radius will still be x. But because we need to integrate in terms of y, because that's what the function is defined as, then we will need to change right x as a function of y. So it would have been x as a function of y if this was a function of y. 
but it's not. It's a function of x. Our life is easy. So don't put this function here. That's not the radius. The radius is just any value of x. So now, what do we do? We need to find f prime of x. Now, for this problem, the hard, hard part is the algebra in between. You need to find this thing under the square root sign. Because once you find it, you just integrate. It becomes very easy. So let's begin. We know that f of x is equal to x squared over 4 minus ln of x over 2. So we know that f prime of x will have to be, if you differentiate this, you'll get x over 2. Because this 2 will come down here. Minus. If we differentiate this, it's going to be 1 over x, so it's going to be 1 over 2x. Okay, so we found our f prime of x, but our mission is 1 plus f prime squared. So if we put them together, I need to multiply the top and bottom by x, so I have the same denominator. So now I'm going to have x squared on top and minus 1. Yep, I've got x squared minus 1 over 2x. So, one more move. We need to square this. f prime of x squared will be this squared, and that's going to give me x squared minus 1 squared divided by 4x squared. Okay, so we have achieved this goal. Now remember, don't put anything in here first. It makes your work more reasonable. Now let's add one to this. We're gonna add one to this. So what we have will be, so like I said, anytime you add one to a fraction, rewrite that one as the denominator of that fraction divided by itself. So I'm gonna write this as 4x squared over 4x squared. And now I have the, a common denominator, which means what I have can be written as under is going to be 4x squared. And on top, I'll have 4x squared plus, if I expand this, okay, there's no shortcut to this. It's going to be x to the fourth minus 2x squared plus 1. And what would this be? I'll have x to the fourth. This is going to be 4x squared minus 2x squared will be plus 2x squared. And this is going to be plus 1. Yes, over 4x squared. And that is this. Now, pay attention to this. Like I said, whoever made this question must have seen the end from the beginning while making the questions or making adjustments. Remember that your teacher knows what they're doing. The top here, you have to see it as a perfect square. Do you see it as a perfect square? Yes, it is x squared plus 1, all squared. That's what you have on top here. And the bottom is also a square. That's why it will fit nicely under a square root sign because you can just take the square root of it. So, this is the same thing as x squared plus 1, all squared, divided by, in fact, let me write it together. It's going to be x squared plus 1 over 2x, all squared. That's what 1 plus f prime of x squared is. You should always look out for things like this. Okay, so now we need to take the square root. See, we're gradually moving up. So if we take the square root of this, we take the square root of this, and guess what? This cancels this out so that what we have is essentially just x squared plus 1 over 2x. That's what this is. So now... <laughs> We can multiply by x and then take the integral. So now we know that the surface area, the surface area is equal to 2 pi times the integral from 1 to 2 of x times this. And we already decided that it is going to be this, x squared 
plus 1 over 2x. See how nicely things cancel out. This guy will cancel this guy. This 2 will cancel this 2. What we have left is just pi. Huh, that's interesting. So the surface area will be equal to, so this cancels this, this cancels this. We have just pi and we have x squared plus 1, dx. We have pi, then we have the integral of um, just x squared plus 1. Yep, let me cancel this. Okay, it's just pi and then 1 to 2 of x squared plus 1 dx. Well, this is the same thing as pi times, if we integrate this, this is going to be x cubed over 3 plus x from 1 to 2. This is going to be, if we plug in 2, it's going to be 8, right? If we plug in 1, it's going to be 1. So 8 minus 1 is 7. So this is pi. This is 7 over 3 plus. If you plug in 2, it's going to be 2. Plug in 1, it's 1. So it's 2 minus 1 is 1. That's where we are. Now, what is this? This is 10. That's, remember, you can write this 1 as 3 over 3. Well, it means 10 pi over 3 is the surface area. And that's our answer for this exercise. This is the key. Never stop learning. Those who stop learning, stop living. Bye-bye.